Hey, this is Joseph Lebrec, and I'm going to show a few different things that are new in the February 2013 update of Adobe Edge Animate. So, one of the new things is the support for the Edge web fonts. So, if I go in here and create a text block, such as this, so just this term animate, I can go into my text and of course choose any of these things. And if I want to add a font, I can do it the same way that I usually was able to do it, except now you see we get sort of two different dialogues. We've got this custom dialogue, which before this has been the really only one that you were able to, to use. And then we have this edge web fonts dialogue that we can use to choose certain specific web fonts that we might want to use in our in our project. So you can see here, even as I switch between these different fonts, they nicely uh, change for us. So I'm going to say add font here, and automatically that's already added in our font library, and it's also selected for us. And we can, of course, uh, adjust any of the properties of the font if we wish. The other thing that's new is filter support. So this means CSS filters. You can see them right here. There's a new filters section of the properties panel. And just like shadows, you can turn filters on or off. So now filters are applied. And we can do things like gray scale, sepia, saturation, and so forth. This is mostly seen, um, can be seen better on an image. So let's grab one. So I'm going to pull in the cover image for Emergent Collective 2, the new community compilation CD that, that my company has released. And once that's in there, I can switch filters on for it. And I can adjust these filters to do things like turn it to grayscale. I can increase the sepia, so make it look like that. I can also adjust the saturation levels. I can invert the image, adjust the brightness, contrast, and blur. I can blur that image out if I want to. And these things can be rotated. A hue can be applied. You can adjust the blur and the X and Y. So with all these different things, you might imagine that, you know, it's not going to be applicable to certain browsers, right? And you can see, sure enough, right here, we get a little warning that CSS filters are not supported in Firefox, IE, or Opera. So that does kind of leave a few things out. But it's nice to be able to actually have this within Animate and be able to play with it. You might be wondering too, what exactly is the difference between the shadows that we have under CSS filters and the shadows that we have under shadow? So if I take my business logo here and I open up my shadow box, and turn my shadow on, you can see that the shadow itself is applied to the image element, right? So let's turn that off. If I go into my filters, turn them on, and then go in and create my shadow. So adjust the blur and the X and Y position and so forth. And that's a little extreme, but you can see that the shadow is actually applied to the um, the the image elements itself, the actual pixel data. So let's make the shadow a different color so it shows up a little better. We'll make a red shadow. So you'll notice as well that all of these different attributes, these properties, are all keyframeable by these little diamonds. So if you wanted to actually animate any of these properties, you could do so just like you animate the properties of any other object.
So the next thing I want to show has to do with um, just elements like boxes and ellipses and things. So here I've drawn out a rectangle. And what I've got here are some differences in uh, the coloring that we have. So you can see here we can actually apply things such as gradients. So maybe I want to apply a gradient wash to this particular image here. So something like that. And I can. I can also go in and add this to my color swatches. So add that one, add this one, and even add the gradient swatch to this thing here. I can adjust the angle of the gradients and so forth. And you can see that this all is reflected as I go through and change it. It's all reflected as a preview on the stage itself. We also have the ability to go from RGBA to hex to HSLA, depending on what we want to work in in our CSS. And that's most of the new stuff within this Edge Animate update. There's, of course, a whole bunch of little enhancements and bugs under the hood, but those are probably the things that are going to stand out most to people actually using the product day to day.